I'm Kathy Davidson, and welcome to our women's meeting. There are a group of women and men here that are endeavoring to walk in the kingdom of God. Not in just the word, but in power. Not by might, not by power, but by my spirit saith the Lord. And that's what we are endeavoring to walk in. We are endeavoring, we are pushing, we are fighting to walk in that spirit. And I welcome you. I get thanks, Jesus, I thank you. I get thanks. I get thanks. I've got something in my spirit and I can't get it out. I get thanks, Jesus. I get thanks, Jesus. Paul, you got the tongue? The Lord would say to you, are you seeking me with all of your heart? Are you laying aside everything that is between you and I, putting them aside to see just me? Are you praying and reading that word? Are you searching for me? Are you not going to be satisfied unless I come myself? Is that what you're looking for? Is that who you are fighting to see? Because I will say to you, saith the Lord, if you seek me with all that is within you, if you endeavor to lay aside everything that is between you and I, if you will not be satisfied until I come myself, you will see me, saith the Lord. My goals just changed. Let's open with prayer. My Heavenly Father, thank you, Jesus. My Heavenly Father, open our eyes that we can see. Open our hearts like you did for Lydia, that we can attend under the things which are spoken. Open our ears that we can hear. Turn us from darkness to light, from the power of Satan, and you. And Father, grant us a spirit of grace on this meeting. Father, a spirit of grace. You granted the, the apostles in the days of Acts great grace. Father, grant us great grace in this meeting. And I ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. We are doing a series. And, it, and, we, and I've called it what Jesus bought for you. What he bought for you on the cross. If you will turn with me to Isaiah 53. He bought something that, that we haven't really considered until now. But I'm going to begin in verse 1 in, in chapter 53 of Isaiah. Who has believed our report? Who has believed? Who has trusted in? Who has committed to? Our report, to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? Who's the report about the arm of the Lord? And who is that arm of the Lord? That arm of the Lord is Jesus. It is Jesus. It is our Messiah. It is our Savior. Oh, he is beautiful. All right. For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant, as a root out of a dry ground. He has no form, no comeliness. And we know that is when he was on the cross. Every bone went out of joint. Every bone came out of joint. That's what the sin did to that body. It said, and, and when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected of men. A man of sorrows, that's pain. And acquainted with grief, that word is sickness. They didn't have enough guts to write what the real word meant back then. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely, surely, the, uh, the prophet Isaiah, speaking the words of the Spirit of Jesus in him, said, surely. Surely he has borne our sickness, our griefs, and carried our sorrows, that's pain. 
Yet we did esteem him smitten of, smitten of God and afflicted. Verse 5, but he was wounded for our transgressions. That's why he was on the tree. He was bruised for our iniquities. And the chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes we are healed. The chastisement of our peace. We talked about this a couple weeks ago. The chastisement of our peace was upon Jesus. The correction, the punishment, the chastisement, whatever it took for Jesus to pay for our peace to the Father, he took. And that word peace is the word shalom. Peace, shalom. That word does not just mean quietness. It means prosperity. It means safety. Did you know that that word meant safety? It meant security. That word peace means safety. It means security that's what Jesus bore in his body so that we could have safety and security that's what he paid for did you know it says who has believed our report if you believe this report you will have safety and you will have security go with me and, and part of it is health and welfare. Go with me to Matthew 24. We're going to look at the personality of Jesus. We know from John 3.16 what the Father said. We've heard it all our lives. But now we are coming into the realization and the revelation of it, the understanding of it in our heart. For God so loved you. For years, I couldn't say that verse with any understanding or belief or faith in it at all. In fact, I thought it was the very opposite. I thought God was up there with a big stick. And you weren't going to find out what you did wrong until you stood before him at the great white throne judgment. And I told God one day as a young kid, I said, that's not fair. Well, you know what? That is not in the word of God. Everything you need to know for that great white throne judgment is right here. It's in the word of God. There is nothing hid. Paul didn't hide it. The apostle Peter didn't hide it. Jesus didn't hide it. It's all written. All our instructions are written and they will bring us peace. For God so loved you, he sent Jesus. Now look at I want to show you the attitude, the personality of Jesus. If you will go to with me, Matthew 23, I'm going to begin in verse 37. I don't know if you've ever read these verses as a personal message to you, but I didn't until just a little while ago. Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophets and stonest them which are sent unto thee. Look what the Messiah said. How often... But I have gathered thy children together, even as a hen gathereth her chickens under her wings, and you would not. Well, guess what? I would. I would. Lift up those wings, Jesus, I'm coming running. I would. Do you see what Jesus' attitude was to the people of Jerusalem, how often I would have gathered you like a chicken gathers her chicks under her wings. How often I'd have done that. But you would not. Well, I would. I would. Would you? You know you can. You know it was paid for on the cross, even to the Gentile. It says that. The chastisement of our peace, our safety, our security, our health was paid for on the tree. Did you know that God wants to protect you? Do you know that God wants to keep you safe? He does? Well, what did he send Jesus for? 
I'm going to heal you. I'm going to forgive all your sins. I'm going to justify you. I'm going to make you prosperous. But the first devil that has a chance is going to eat you alive. As we spoke this morning, the devil is not equal to God. Not by far. God is a million times greater than the devil he created. And he created Satan to use him. And it is so fun to watch him go down. Now, I'm going to show you a little bit about how God protects his people. Because we are have such, as, as my teachers used to say, such pea-brained that we don't remember who we serve. Go with me to um, 2 Kings 19. The, there, after King David, there were kings. Most of them did not follow God. They were evil. When they did not follow God, after a while, when there was enough sin, God had to judge. But there were some kings that trusted, loved God. If you love God, you're going to do what he says. Don't sit there and run your mouth and tell you. Tell, that's what I said at the end of the program. I said, I've heard him. I've heard him in, in, from the pulpit say, no, I know you love God with all your heart. And I remember thinking, I don't know if I love anything. I don't even know if I love me. And you say I love God with all my heart? If they did, they wouldn't act the way they do. They wouldn't do the things they did. Now, this is a king that loved God with all his heart, and God said so. And look what God did for a man, one man, that he put over the people of Jerusalem to watch. Now, by the time Hezekiah is dealing with the king of Assyria, the, Assyr the king of Assyria already went down about six years before and took all Israel. Okay, I found this on the web for how many went down. Check it out. I don't know where he got that, but anyway, I won't say Assyria very loud. <laughs> But the king of Assyria had already come down and destroyed Israel. He had already destroyed the country of Israel. He had already taken their king and all their people or a lot of their people and took them into Babylon. He already destroyed cities in Judah. And now he's got his eyes on Jerusalem. But Hezekiah, unlike the other kings took the letter to God and laid it out before him and said, Lord, you're God. And this king has destroyed a whole lot of kingdoms that had other gods. But you are the God. What are you going to do? And I'll show you what our God, because we serve the same God. Do you understand that? We serve the same God that Hezekiah did. The same God. He does not change. He never changes. He, is, he dwells in eternity. His word is forever. His word is Jesus. He does not change. He did not change from the Old Testament to the New. The only thing that changed was the covenant. It's the same God. We serve the same God. Now look. At what God does for Hezekiah. He, he sends his men to Isaiah, the prophet. And he tells Isaiah, you know, talk to God because we're in big trouble here. And Isaiah comes back with an answer. But I'm going to go down with, for time. I want you to go down to verse 34. And this is God speaking through Isaiah. The last sentence he says, For I will defend this city and save it for my own sake. This is God speaking. And for my servant David's sake. I will put it right here. You want your children saved? Walk in obedience. Walk with God. Walk in love. And God will save your children. Whether they like it or not. So right here. God speaks, for I will defend this city and save it for my own sake and for my 
servant David's sake. And it looks, look at the verse 35. And it came to pass that that night that the angel of the Lord went out. The angel of the Lord. Who's the Lord of hosts? Jesus. Sends out one of his best. And smote in the camp of the Assyrians a hundred four score, that's eighty, and five thousand men. And when they woke up in the morning, behold, they were all dead corpses. You know, here's where you'd love to hear God say, you want to mess with me now? A hundred eighty-five thousand dead men. And nobody in Jerusalem lifted a finger. We serve the same God. That we, with our weak hearts, don't realize what kind of a God we serve. Go with me to, I think it is, let's see. I think it is 2 Kings. Yeah, 2 Kings 6. And this is about Elisha. Elisha kept telling the king of Israel before Israel was destroyed what was going on in Syria because they were at war. And the king of Assyria finally said, after they got caught time after time after time of trying to attack, and Israel always knew where they were. And so finally the king, the king says of Syria, he said, all right, which one of you guys is a spy? And one of them speaks up, there's nobody here that's a spy. You got a prophet in Israel. He knows what you say in your bedchamber. Do you know, I've had God say things in the spirit to me. I even hear the people's voices talking. I, the one time it happened, God was showing me what somebody was saying. I turned around to look to see if they were there. Well, that's what God was doing with, with Elisha. He's telling them everything that's going on now. The king of Syria says, I've had it. Let's go get, let's go get Elisha. We're going to go get him. Because we're not going to want a war with that prophet over there. So they're going to go out and get the secret weapon. They're going to destroy it. And look, what, look at verse 17. They send their whole army, their whole army after one man. We serve the same God. One man they're after. One man. They're not even going to, to get the king of Israel. They're going to go get Elisha. And they wake up in the morning and the whole city is surrounded by an army. And it says in verse 15, in chapter 6, And when the servant of the man of God was risen early and had gone forth, behold, a host campused the city, both with horses and chariots. And the servant said to him, Alas, my master, how shall we do? And he answered, Fear not. He said, for they that be with us are more than they be with them. And look at this next verse. It says, and Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man and he saw. Behold, the mountain was full, full, full of horses. Or of chariots. It says full of horses and chariots. A fire. A fire. Around Elisha. Who is the Lord of hosts? Jesus is the captain of the hosts. He's got a, a mountain full of chariots and horses of fire. Protecting one man. One man. That's the God we serve. Glory be to Jesus. 
And you know what? Those horses and chariots of fire are not in dry dock. They are there dispersed whenever they're needed. That's the God we serve. That's the God that paid for, paid for our security, our safety. We know the story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Talk about the three amigos. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. We know that, the, that Nebuchadnezzar threw them in the fire. We know that. We know that they would not burn. We know they're walking around in the fire like it's an afternoon stroll in the park and they are not alone. I love it. I love it. The host of the warfare, the king of kings, the lord of lords, they just don't save him from burning in the fire. He comes down for a visit. Can you imagine what was going on in that flame? Can you imagine the fellowship? But did you know that that happened the same time that God's sent an army to destroy everyone in Israel. Did you know that? That happened the same time people in Israel were being slaughtered and carried away and starved. What was the difference? They were both Jews. They were both Hebrews. One, two, three men trusted God. That was the only difference. Three men loved God. And God was going to make sure they refused to bow down to Nebuchadnezzar's image. Refused. They said, burn us alive if you want to, but we are not bowing down. The same time their own people were being starved and killed and carried away. Do you see the difference? Do you see the benefit for obeying God, for loving God, for worshiping God? He loved you enough he sent Jesus to pay for our sins so we could worship him, so we could be reconciled, so we can stand face to face with God. Yes, you cannot see the face of God and live, but you can be in his presence. I am in it often. Just like it said in the beginning, I am trying to lay everything down. I can to stand in his presence. There is no better feeling. There is no better joy. There is no more peace than knowing God is right there looking at you. Now, go to Psalm 91. Oh, how many times I've seen this shared on Facebook that they miss some of the very most important parts of it. This psalm is not for everybody. There are certain criteria you have to meet. And being a Jew isn't one of them. All right, Psalm 91, verse 1. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. What did we read in Matthew 23? How often I would have gathered thee as a hen gathereth her chicks under her her wings, the shadow of the Almighty. I don't know, I grew up around chickens. There is nothing cuter than a mother hen and her chicks when she's got them under their wings. Honey, she'll peck you to death if she has to. Don't you be touching any of your babies. He that dwelleth in a secret place for the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Criteria number one. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge. He is my refuge. 
not anything else. He is my refuge and my fortress, my God. In him will I trust. What do you have your trust in? What do you have your trust in? Do you have your trust in your government? Do you have your trust in your employer? Do you have your trust in your bank account? Do you have your trust in your doctor? You don't think doctors have opinions? Mention virus. It says, surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler. Why? If he is your trust. If he is your fortress. If he is your refuge. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noise and pestilence. The noise and pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers. There's that chicken again. There's our Jesus. How often would I have gathered thee? He will cover thee with his feathers. And under his wings shall thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. See why you need to read the word of God? His truth. The word. Jesus is the truth. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by noon day, by day. We don't have arrows. Have you ever seen a bullet? Nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness. Nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness. You mean God can keep you from pestilence? Are you dwelling in his shadow? Is he your trust? Is he what your trust is in? You don't think he's capable? It says, neither for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Are you ready for that? Because it's not very far off. Are your hearts ready for that? Only with thine eyes shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Be cause. That's an important word there, because. Because. Thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the Most High, thy habitation. Thy habitation. Where do you live? Where do you live? Do you live in the Word? Do you live in the Gospel? Or do you live in the world? Do you live in the world? Or do you live in the Word of God, in the Gospel, in prayer? Where do you live? There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. His angels charge over thee. Some of them have chariots and horses of fire. Wow, wouldn't that be fun to see? You know, my mother, I've shared this before. When I was five years old, my sister was about three. We were playing outside in Pennsylvania. That's when you could let your kids out the door, you know. And, and we were playing, about, uh, we were playing beh about 15 yards behind a guardrail on the road because there was just a little dip, and we were down in that dip, and we were playing. I think I remember my sister had her little stroller or whatever, but we were playing down there. My mother was inside doing laundry, and as she describes it, she said she was just working away at the laundry, and all of a sudden she said, I felt a voice. And that's when God speaks to you. Sometimes that's what it feels like. I felt a voice. And she said, that voice said, go get your kids. So she did. She called my sister and I, 
and we came in. We came in the house. It wasn't five minutes. It wasn't five minutes. A car went through the guardrail. This was daytime. This was like noon. Went through the guardrail, flipped over, and landed where my sister and I were playing. He shall keep his angels charge over thee. Dos has the story about the bull. One minute that bull was going to kill him. That bull was going to kill him and nobody could help him. And the next minute he's standing on the bull's back. My mother tells me when uh, my family was going through the divorce that she was alone with my younger brother. He's 15 years younger than I am. And she was taking care of him. She was mowing the lawn at the house. I only heard this story a month ago. She was mowing the lawn at the house. And we had a quarter of an acre. It was a big lawn. And she had a riding lawn mower. And she's taking care of the house because there's no man there. And she was, there was a swing set there that was given to my sister and I when we were younger. And she thought she could ride the lawnmower, which she had done, underneath it, grab the swing, and lift the swing over your head. But she said this day, she said somehow, when she went to grab the swing, it got a hold of the lawnmower. And it lifted it up to turn it over. And she said, the last thing I remember is saying to myself, you better get away from this lawnmower. Get off. And she said, but Kathy, the next thing I knew, I was standing about 10 feet away from the swing set, looking at the lawnmower that was at the side of the swing set. She said, that proved to me God was with me. Proved to me too. I wish she'd have told me that about 50 years ago. Isn't that beautiful? He will keep his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. Are we special people? No. No. What do we do? We make the Lord our habitation. It said, um, keep thee, let me see. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest they dash thy foot against a stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and the adder. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and the adder. There, um, the young lion and the dragon, thou shalt trample under your feet. Because, there's that word of because again. Here's another, here's another thing that we have to do. Because he has set his love upon me. You got that? Because. This will only work for you if you do the becauses. Because he has set his love upon me. Therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high because he has known my name. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. Why? Because he set his love on me. It says, I will deliver him and honor him. And with long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. I love that last line, show him my salvation. That's twofold. He'll save you and he'll show you the salvation, the Savior Jesus. He'll show him to you. Now, with that, go with me to John 14. Because he has set his love upon me. Therefore. Therefore. John 14 verse 21. He that has my commandments. Jesus speaking because it's in red. He that has my commandments and keepeth, it, keepeth them. He it is that loveth me. You see how you love Jesus? You see how you love the Father? It says, because you have set your love upon me. He says, he that hath my commandments and keepeth them, doeth them, it is he that loveth me. And he that loveth me shall be loved of my father. And I will love him 
and will manifest myself to him. And Judah said to him, not Iscariot, Lord, how is it that thou will manifest thyself unto us and not unto the world? And Jesus answered and said unto him, if a man love me, he will keep my words. He will keep my words. You love Jesus, then you'll keep his words. And if you keep his words, Psalm 91 promises he'll deliver you from the pestilence and the arrow. And the catastrophes. He'll keep you. He says if a man love me he will keep my words. What's one of the first words Jesus said? Repent and believe the gospel. Repent and believe the gospel. Ah. Got one down. It says we be my mar ah. and he will love. He will keep my words. And my father will love him. And we will come unto him. And make our abode with him. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. That's your abode. That's the abode. You know how wonderful it is to know God is with you? Do you know how wonderful it is you don't have to be afraid? Do you know how wonderful it is that God will tell you when you should be someplace else than where you're at? Do you know how wonderful it is that God will pull you out of the fire if he has to? Why? Because you set your love on him and you do his words. And the first words he said was change your mind, repent and believe. Believe what I've done for you. You are not going to get the safety and security unless you believe that gospel. Because that's part of it. You must believe that Jesus died for you. You must believe that he was buried for you. You must believe that he went to hell for you. You must believe. You must believe that God was satisfied with that sacrifice and raised him and you from the dead. You must believe that. That's the first words Jesus said to do. Believe. Believe. Do you believe that? Do you want to believe that? Oh, there are days we want to and it doesn't seem like we can. Well, you know what? God is able to get you there. What did he say in the beginning in that beautiful tongue and interpretation? Don't be satisfied until I myself come. And he will come if you call on him. If you want to be born again. If you want to have that divine protection. Because that's what it is. Then pray with me these words. Jesus. Jesus. Come into my heart. Be Lord of my life. Take my life. Lead me. Guide me. Fix me. Because he can. And I ask this in your name. And you know what Jesus said? Because it's written in red. All that come to me. All. All. All that come to me. I will in no why. Cast out. Amen. Amen. I get thanks, Jesus. I thank you. I get thanks. I get thanks, Father. I thank you. Father, I thank you. Father, I thank you. Father, I thank you. I thank you. I thank you. I thank you. Father, I thank you. Father, I thank you. Father, I thank you. I thank you for the power that raised Jesus from the dead. Father, I thank you for the power that raised 
Jesus from the dead. Father, I thank you for that power now in Jesus' name. Father, I thank you for that power that raised Jesus from the dead. Father, I thank you for that power that raised Jesus from the dead. Father, I thank you for that power now that raised Jesus from the dead. Father, I thank you for that power. 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 I thank you. I thank you. Father, I break the power of fear now in Jesus' name. Father, I break the power of fear in this person's life. Someone that's listening, you have some fear. You have fear in your life that something is going to happen to you that is a lie of the devil. Father, I thank you. I break the power of this fear. I break the power of this fear. I break the power of this fear. Father, I thank you. Look what God did with Elisha. That whole army of chariots and horses was to protect one man. And you have angels around you. God did not give you that spirit of fear. He does not give spirits of fear. God does not give spirits of fear. He said, God does not give spirits of fear, but of love. Of love. Of love and power. Did you know God gave you power? And a sound mind. A sound mind. I break the power of this fear. I break the power of this fear. I break the power of this fear. Nothing's going to happen to you. I break the power of this fear. The God we serve is a million times greater than whatever could happen to you. I break the power of this fear. 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 Do you know that, that um, Lester Sumrall had a tremendous fear of his father? Tremendous fear. And when he told his father one day that he was going to preach the gospel, his father was extremely angry. And he said, I'll deal with you, boy, when I get home. Lester went upstairs and God started talking to him and he delivered him, delivered him from a spirit of fear, a spirit of fear. He actually threw up some green gunk and he said when that gunk came out, there was no more fear. He wasn't afraid of his father. And you know what? His father never said anything again. I break the power of this fear in Jesus' name. I break it right now. I break the power of this fear of husbands and wives and children. I break the power of this fear. God has not given you the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and a sound mind. I break the power of this fear. I break the power of this fear. I break the power of this fear. I break the power. I break your power in Jesus' name. I break the, your power, devil, in Jesus' name. I break your power. I break your power right now. I break your power. I break your power in Jesus' name. I break your power in Jesus' name. I come in 
the name of Jesus of Nazareth, I break your power. I break your power. I break your power in Jesus' name. I break your power. 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 I break your power in Jesus' name. I break your power. I break your power. I break your power. You wicked lying spirit. I break your power. 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 I bring you down in the name of Jesus. I break your power. 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 I break your power in Jesus' name. Glory. Anybody need any help? Amen. I break this power now in Jesus' name. I break the power of this fear in Jesus' name. I break the power of this fear. 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 The Lord is my helper. I will not fear what man can do unto me. I will not fear what man can do unto me. The Lord is my helper. I will not fear what man can do unto me. I will not fear what man can do unto me. I will not fear what man can do unto me. I will not fear what man can do unto me. The Lord is my helper. The Lord is my helper. I will not fear what man can do unto me. I will not fear what man can do unto me. I break the power of this fear. Our Lord is my helper. I will not fear what man can do unto me. Amen. See you next week.